What exactly is guanxi, and what makes this Chinese phrase so special that it got included in the Oxford Dictionary? While it is commonly translated as connection or compared to the idea of networking in Western culture, guanxi entails much more about how individuals, businesses, and the government interact and function in the Chinese society. Here's an example. Say a girl named Han Mei Mei, who lives in the city of Hangzhou, wants to receive better education by going to a top middle school in Shanghai. Since the school only accepts students from Shanghai with very good grades, she can't get in. Well, one way for her to study there without actually getting in is to first enroll at another less competitive school in Shanghai, and then apply to the top school as a transient student. The problem is she can't get into that school either because neither is she a citizen of Shanghai nor does she have legal residency there. So she appears to have gone into a dead end. Now let's see how Guanxi can work magic here. Han Mei Mei's mom is an entrepreneur in Hangzhou with plenty of close connections to other entrepreneurs, one of whom owns a company in Shanghai. She decides to ask him a favor, and he agrees to fake some paperwork and hire her as an out-of-state specialist. Of course, Han Mei Mei's mom doesn't actually have to work at his company, but the fake paperwork got her the specialist status and enabled her family, including Han Mei Mei, to have legal residency in Shanghai. First problem solved. Now, Han Mei Mei's father also has some connection that ultimately leads to a school official of the top school that Han Mei Mei wants to go to. So again, he asks for a favor, and the school official agrees to accept her as a transient student and to maintain her student status over the course of her middle school study. Voila! It goes without saying that Han Mei Mei's parents have to thank their connections by, for example, sending gifts or inviting them to dinner. But more importantly, when in the future the connections need a favor that's within their scope of power, they will have to go out of their way to help. In fact, failure to return the favor is considered an unforgivable offense, which will not only terminate the squads immediately, but also lead to negative consequences in multiple facets of one's life. We can try to break down relevant social interactions into categories. If we start at the most innocent end, we first have sharing public information. This is mostly equivalent to just hanging out. The second level is sharing private information. This type of information isn't exactly confidential per se, and it isn't really illegal to share them. But it definitely takes some solid, powerful connections to get them. In our example. Han Mei Mei's parents figured out the whole plan by talking to different people and learning the intricate details of the middle school admission process. The third level is what we like to call favors, doing things within one's scope of power to help their connections achieve their goals. These favors or tricks really often utilize loopholes in rules and regulations. For example, hiring someone without needing him or her actually working for you—that's not exactly illegal. Even if it is technically illegal, these favors are so common that it's impossible to track. That leaves us with the fourth level: corruption. These are things that are definitely illegal. For example, directly giving a high-ranking position to some underqualified connection. These people will not be able to get away with their misuse of power. So, if we take a look at this spectrum, it is really level two and three that are quintessential guanxi. The types of interactions that aren't really illegal, but have so much nuances in them that they have a lot of implications to the social functions of the Chinese society. Some argue that the reason why guanxi dominates in China stems back to the age of Confucius. His doctrine, which has huge impacts on Chinese culture, teaches that everyone should be part of multiple social relationships and not isolated. These relationships include family, friendship, classmates, colleagues, etc., which provide the backbone for all modern age guanxi. Confucius also said something along the lines of, "The favor of a drop of water shall be returned by a whole river," which emphasized the importance of reciprocity, which of course is how guanxi is maintained. A more recent origin of Guanxi relates to the changes in the structure of workforce. In the Mao Zedong era, people were assigned to state-owned places of employment called Danwei or work units. Workers are bound to their work unit for life, forming particularly strong bonds with their work unit colleagues. After Deng Xiaoping's economic reforms, it became possible to work at private enterprises and multinational corporations. The previously unheard of job hopping slowly gained popularity. Some believe that it is at this point in time that modern age Guanxi started to take form. 
Right after the reforms, the legal and institutional protection that we now take for granted in developed countries were very incomplete, if not totally non-existent. So the former work unit colleagues, now at their respective new work environments, seeked help and protection from each other by doing favors using their new scope of power. Even as the legal system improved during the past 30 years, this habit of seeking help and protection from people and relationships instead of relying on rules and policies remained. And that is the essence of Guanxi. Bottom line is, Guanxi provided stability to Chinese society when incomplete legal and institutional systems failed to do so. It's a game that's fair and square. In order to compete for scarce resources, People use not only rational and quantified criteria, but also their ability to create and sustain a multitude of meaningful relationships.